Hello, and thanks for joining us on Arts24 for our film show today. We have with us in the studio our film critic, Lisa Nesselson. Thanks for being here. And we have writer-director Rolf De Heer, all the way from my home country, Australia. Welcome. Thank you. Let's start, though, with some pictures of the London premiere of Paul King's prequel film, Wonka, starring French-American actor Timothée Chalamet. He plays the title role, and he not just acts, but sings and dances in the film, too. Take a look. It's a total privilege and more challenging than dancing like on stage because you got to keep the center of the frame. You know, you can't wander off camera <laughs> like stuff you could do on stage. Uh, but uh, it was very rewarding. Rewarding. I've never done anything like that. Rolf, any hidden singing or dancing skills of your own? Me? Yeah? None whatsoever. <laughs> dancing in particular, I'm very bad at. You're very bad at. Okay, well, one thing that you are good at is filmmaking. Uh, a lot of your films are... Uh, Critic have been critically acclaimed. Your latest feature is called The Survival of Kindness. It comes out here in France uh, next month. It competed in this year's Berlin Film Festival and won the prize awarded by the International Critics Jury. It's your first film in nearly a decade. Um, what drew you back to filmmaking? Nothing, I never left it. Um, look, it was a sequence of events that happened. Um, I spent a long time uh, promoting Charlie's Country. It was almost two years where I really didn't get a lot of spare time. Uh, then I was commissioned to do a big film and I spent a year and a half, nearly two years, writing the screenplay and starting work on it, pre-production and so on. And then that fell apart. And then um, I worked on a passion project, a, a, a thing that I had dearly loved and and got it just about over the line of financing and COVID happened and um, it, it fell apart um, oh. and so now we have the survival of kindness. But it's the way things go and uh, I'm comfortable. I enjoyed those years as much as I enjoyed if I'd made three films. Well, let's take a look at the survival of kindness by Rolf De Heer. So that was The Survival of Kindness. Lisa, can you tell us a bit more about the film? Sure. This is a gorgeous film with virtually no dialogue that accompanies a dark-skinned woman on an odyssey on foot through incredible landscapes. It's definitely about the damaging idiocy of racism, but it's also about the savage beauty of the natural world, which from giant ants to the endless stars overhead remains unimpressed by the stupid belief systems, brutality and unecological behavior of some humans toward other humans. In just the first 90 seconds, we see a diorama of small plastic miniatures of black people dead or running away from triumphant white figurines. The family admiring it are all mumbling inside World War I style gas masks, the ones that would make a platypus wonder who are these strange creatures. <laughs> a wire cage outside holds our protagonist identified only as black woman. Now, uh, Rob, uh, Rolf, uh, Indigenous Australians have has it has been a recurrent theme in your work. I'm thinking of uh, the critically acclaimed Ten Canoes that was made entirely in Indigenous language. Charlie Country, of course, starring your good friend, the late uh, Indigenous actor David Gulpilil. Uh, the recent referendum in Australia to give constitutional re representation to Indigenous Australians was rejected. But nonetheless, do you think attitudes are still shifting in, in the right way in Australia? Oh, no, no. Attitudes are, are um, shifting in the wrong direction uh, and have been for maybe 15 years now, um, perhaps a little longer. Why uh, is that? Why is that? Um, look, my theories are my theories. Um, uh, it has to do with individuals who allow it, uh, who are in a position to disallow it, but who effectively give permission. So that, for example, in America, you have somebody like Donald Trump, 
elected, that gives permission to people to behave badly. And that is what happened in Australia and continues to happen. Um, yeah, I, 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 look, I think it's, uh, it's a catastrophe you know, that, that, that this happened in the way that it did. But, you know, there are many things to, to many reasons why it might have done. Um, social media is one of them, the, the, the vicious use of it and, and just the, the personal grandstanding, you know, in opposition in order to benefit politically. It's, uh, it's a shocking thing. Uh, Wajami Hussan plays black woman and she's a complete newcomer to cinema. Tell us more about her. Um, Wajami is a refugee from the Congo in Africa. Uh, she came to Australia about 15 years ago after a, a stupendously difficult life. Uh, she has seven children. Um, she is extraordinary. Um, uh, I was very lucky that she was encouraged to what she calls apply <laughs> for the job um, and, and um, she was incredible to work with and, and, and to think that she had never even set foot inside a cinema it's before incredible. she did the film. <laughs> it's um, just incredible. Yeah, it, it, it's completely incredible but she felt to me in our discussions uh, bef in, in the casting process, she had so much depth that I thought, I know it's a risk, but with small films like this, you have to take the risks. But my goodness, if we can pull this off, mm. this, she could be fantastic. And she is. She's just wonderful. Yeah. Well, moving on now, Japan's uh, submission to the Oscars for the Best International Feature is a film shot in Japanese by German filmmaker Wim Wenders. Tell us more about Perfect Days, Lisa. Well, when the basic synopsis for this was announced before the world's uh, the film's world premiere in Cannes, where it won the Best Actor Award for the lead actor, veteran Koji Yakusho, I think most people scratched their heads. What could possibly be interesting about a guy who lives alone and cleans public toilets in Tokyo? Well, an awful lot, it turns out. It also won the Ecumenical Jury Prize in Cannes. Some people like superhero movies on his modest but poetic scale. Hirayama, the protagonist here, is a hero for me. Why is that? Because he has bottomless affection for the analog world. His job cleaning public restrooms <laughs> leaves him lots of time to read books on paper, take photographs of trees on film, and best of all, listen to American rock and roll on <laughs> audio cassettes. <laughs> so an old soul, Lisa. Well, let's take a look at Perfect Days by Wim Wenders. Song, Perfect Day was lodged in my brain for probably a week afterwards and maybe from watching the show it'll be in yours too. <laughs> I'd go so far to say that most people will find this a perfect or near perfect two hours, the viewing of which will brighten your day. And we all need a bit of brightening in our day, I think, uh, especially at the moment. Uh, the latest Disney animation, Wish, has begun to roll out worldwide. It comes as Disney celebrates its centennial this year. Rolf, very quickly, uh, your favourite animated Disney movie um, of all time? I saw The Little Mermaid seven times, I think. <laughs> I have two daughters, think, you see. Ah, yes. And <laughs> I saw, it. yeah, yeah. So I probably I have to say The Little Mermaid. Little Mermaid? Maybe, yeah. Okay, for me it's yeah. The Lion King. Lisa? Oh, I, uh, my favourite, maybe Bambi. Bambi. <laughs> Okay, well, here in Paris, Wish is showing at the, the Grand Rex. It's Europe's largest cinema. Tell us more, Lisa. 
Well, some people time their European vacations to visit major <laughs> art exhibits or Christmas fairs that are enormous. My advice is that at least once in your life to sample a decades-long Paris tradition at the Grand Rex Movie Theater, a freestanding marble that is celebrating its 90th anniversary. Right now, through January 7th, you can see the new Disney film Wish, preceded by the real attraction for me and for generations of kids, and that's the Ferry des Eaux, or Fanciful Dancing Fountain Show, 20 Minutes of Silliness. That sounds great. <laughs> uh, Wish follows protagonist Asha, who leads a rebellion against King Magnifico, who now has People who has the unique power to, me, to decide whether or not to make his citizens' Somebody's wishes come true. You can actually so check out our show on 100 Years of Disney with interviews time. with the cast of Wish deserves. on our website, france 24 Com. Well, Rolf, Lisa, thank you so much for joining us today. Let's leave you, our viewers, with a look at Disney's Wish. Stay tuned. More news coming up here on France 24. I believe I have just been threatened. Who would dare threaten me? I have no response to that. <laughs> there is a traitor amongst us. Find Asha. It's a dead end. With unsanded mahogany. Oh, good find, Valentino. My butt found it. I started this. I have to finish it.